humans, constantly multiplying and expanding. But our success comes at a price, as vulnerable animals often go extinct due to the urbanization of natural habitats. In Southern California, urbanization has led to the decline of the Western Pond Turtle, a native species that has been in California since prehistoric times. But students and professors at UCLA are working to ensure the survival of California's only native turtle. So every senior in environmental science does what's called a practicum. So this is a year-long project, kind of a senior thesis that we're involved in, and we're working on a reintroduction of the Western Pond Turtle to the greater LA area. Western Pond Turtles were in the LA River Basin, they were in the LA River Drainage. Historically, they're not, at least in the lower parts of the LA River, they're not there anymore. Turtles have, you know, the dubious distinction of having the highest fraction of their species on Earth endangered of any major group of organisms. It's pretty clear that in Southern California, where water's restricted anyhow, humans have made that restriction even worse because we borrow a lot of that water and we use it. It used to be kind of easier to move from one watershed to another, from one creek to another, but now there's houses in between, there's roads. So then what happens is, is like the population in the stream becomes isolated. And then if it declines, other turtles from other streams can't come in to sort of repopulate it. So what was sort of a local temporary population crash could get rescued by other populations and now they can't anymore. In the reintroduction of the western pond turtle, we are using a lot of techniques that are common to reintroduction. So that's finding a source population, that's figuring out exactly where you want to put the animals once you have them, and eventually it's going to mean monitoring the animals and making sure the population is stable. One high hope that we have for this project is that in doing an urban reintroduction, uh, humans will see these animals and they'll see that western pond turtles belong in this type of habitat and we're really hoping that it will be an educational experience for a lot of people nearby. Wherever we end up putting them, we are planning on putting up a lot of signage, a lot of information to show people that this is a native animal to Southern California, something that deserves to be protected and we're really hoping that a message we can send is it's not something that has to be in conflict with humans, it's the wildlife and people can live and inhabit the same spaces successfully. We're also conducting a smaller scale introduction of western pond turtles into the Mildred Mathias Botanical Gardens on campus at UCLA. And this project is a little bit different from our larger reintroduction. With this project, we're taking western pond turtles that have shown up in shelters in Southern California, and we're gonna be putting them into a certain area of the botanical gardens in the hopes of creating an educational experience for people who come and visit. And we wanted not only to have a space to test run our reintroduction, but also a space to educate people on what is going to be happening on the larger scale. So the turtles that we have are currently on the roof of the Botany Building here at UCLA. So you have a large plastic tank that you fill with water. We put in some cinder blocks and some basking sites for them to hide in and go sun. And you know, they seem to be doing well. We've been monitoring them relatively closely, feeding them and everything. It's really important that we as people are conscientious of what's around us. So in the case of Western pond turtles, this means that if there's a population near you, generally try to leave the animals alone. Don't leave your trash out and attract raccoons. Don't have a, you know, a cat that roams freely at night and might try to eat them. Those are actually very real threats to these wild populations. And people are expanding and there's a lot of building and urbanization in areas where these animals are, but we can coexist with them. And it's important to remember that we share the space that we have and to try and minimize our impact.